Hey guys, in today's video, I'll be doing a quick unboxing of this action camera. I'm also going to be doing some performance and honest reviews. All right, so let's get started. Okay, let's give it a try. Let's see what's inside. All right, so it does come with a uh, housing. Let's take off the quick start guide. Oh, this is nice because this seems to be like a, one of the deal breakers, you know. Even though the price of the Brave 7 LE is affordable. Yeah, so it does come with this remote, okay, with photo and video. So you don't have to push the button on your, uh, on your device when you're using it. Let's like say if you're using it as a dash cam or when you're biking. Okay. And you want to try it out later. Okay, so a bunch of accessories, straps. The cable. Look at these guys. It does come with two batteries already. Okay. I heard that the battery life here are good, so we're gonna try it out. Plus, you've got a dual battery charger. That's nice. Now, guys, looking at the device itself, it feels like the Osmo Action. You know, like it doesn't feel cheap, even though the price is actually affordable. I'm gonna be posting a link or links at the bottom so you can actually check prices out there. Um, so it has your power button on the side. I believe these are like the switches. Okay. Uh, later on, I'll be doing a test and see how it goes. You'll notice there's a screen here at the front. All right. So that's basically one of the reasons why I, I, you know, I wanted this um, camera or video is to do blogging basically. You know, me as a photographer, I won't be using it to take a lot of photos because I would have my camera with me, but just to kind of see myself, frame my shot when I, whenever I do blogging because I'm currently using my iPhone to uh, take photos or take blogs, videos of myself. Now on the side, you'll get access to the outputs, uh, also micro USB. Now at the bottom is where you would normally find your battery compartment and also where you put in the micro USB. Okay, let's pop in the battery. The touch screen at the back is quite responsive. Now in terms of specs, it does have a two inch screen at the back. You can actually swipe up and you'll have access to video settings, the quality and also the resolution. Uh, it does have a built-in image stabilizer, okay, which are probably gonna be leave on all the time. It has a built-in Wi-Fi as well, so you can control it with your phone. But it does have a screen already, so I'll probably use the screen at the back together with the wrist uh, remote okay, with your photo and video so I don't have to uh, fiddle with the buttons you know now surprisingly this wristwatch remote is ready to go so you can actually press the photo or video uh, without pairing the device which is pretty cool now, in terms of design and build quality it's very similar to the Osmo uh, I like that it doesn't have the uh, lens attachment so this is basically Good to go. Plus, at the bottom you'll find the tripod attachment so it doesn't obstruct the battery compartment. Now there's no external microphone on this device. Uh, there's only micro HDMI and USB on the side. Other than that, the device is pretty sealed. I don't see any gaps in between. Um, this device is pretty much good to go. Like you don't need the, the housing to use it, you know, like underwater unless you really go crazy and uh, do like deep diving all right guys so we're just going to quickly review the settings in here so on the main screen you'll notice that uh, you, know, you, you can actually tap it so it shows the screen uh, in full screen tap it once again and it shows you the current mode so right now we're on video as you notice there's uh, 720p 60 frames per second so here's your settings the playback now if you swipe to the left it's going to show you the photo mode so you'll notice it changes to single 20 megapixel. Now the settings for photo is different also than the video, but you'll notice it's, it's quite similar. Okay, so we're going to skip to the photo settings. So now you'll notice as video resolution. So the settings here from 720p, 60 frames per second, up to 4K at 30 frames per second. Okay, let's go back. Now the second option is voice record. So it basically turns on and off. Same thing with image stabilizer. 
uh, video quality. Uh, you got three settings, high, middle, and low. Uh, wind noise reduction all, also on and off. Uh, same thing with auto low light, exposure value, uh, there's metering, date stamp. And let's see, now we'll go to settings. So sounds, yeah, you get to see the boot up sounds, like the beep, okay. Uh, this one's important, so angle super wide. So if you wanna get like a super, you know, wide view, and then you can go up to narrow if you just wanted to, um, or reduce the distortion, okay, on your picture. So basically it crops out. And uh, the diving mode, uh, just turn it on and off. Effect, you know, like black and white, natural, normal. Uh, driving mode, I haven't used it. Okay, so I think this is when you're driving. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, we'll find out. Upside down, so yeah, if you're filming, of course, upside down, screen saver, frequency, daytime. Okay, so those are just system settings. All right, so now we're just gonna swipe to the right to enter the or to find out settings for the photos, okay? So you'll notice it's pretty similar. Uh, so photo resolution, by default, it's at 20 megapixels. Uh, image quality, I always set it to high. Uh, ISO, uh, so same thing. So pretty much uh, same as the video settings. In terms of settings, um, other settings, I mean, yeah, not much of a difference between the video. So there we go, let's just see system settings, okay. Perfect, so that's like the version or model number. Okay, so now on the main screen, we're just gonna swipe down. So there's two settings. So this is the power settings and also the lock settings. So basically if you lock it, and, and to unlock it, you just have to swipe, okay, up to the unlock feature, and then that's gonna show up the display again. Swipe up, so that gives you quick access to resolution. So if you're in a video mode, gives you the settings for video resolution and also the quality. Uh, there's the, I believe it, the image stabilizer. Turn it on and turn it off. Okay, and then swipe down to exit out. All right, to switch to front LCD screen, you just press and hold this M button. I think it stands for mode. And that switches over to the front LCD screen. Now the front LCD resolution is pretty good, you know, despite of it being like a small size. Now once you're on the selfie mode using the front LCD screen, if you press the M or mode button, it toggles between photo. So as you can see, it's a little bit wider if you're on the photo mode. Press M again. Okay, so now you're back to video mode. And if you need to again switch back to the front LCD screen, you have to stop first. Okay, and then you press and hold M, and that's gonna switch over to the front LCD screen. This is an audio test. Audio test for the Acaso action camera. Audio test, one, two, three. We're driving into bumpy roads and uh, potholes just to check the image stabilizer, you know, if you're gonna be using it as a dash cam. Right now, I'm holding it using a monopod. Just uh, making a quick walk here in the neighborhood. Alright, so this will kind of give you just a feel of what the uh, actual vlog or actual video would look like. So, I'm using the in camera distortion fix. So, that's why you don't see a lot of like a bulge or distortion or on the lines on the horizon. Okay, so now it is recording. As you can see, you might not see it on the camera, but uh, you know that little red dot indicator uh, showing that it's recording. In terms of image quality, I am pleased. There is some noticeable distortion if you use the super wide, but if you're bothered with it, you can always change the field of view settings for less distortion effect. Now, if you're needing to explore and use it for other activities and you know wanting to get more accessories, you can pick up one of these uh, newer 50 in one action camera accessory kit so that's part of the uh, the unboxing that I did um, now these are also compatible with GoPros DJI and also the Acaso Brave and just to add if you're going to use the wrist uh, remote control um, there's no way that you can detach it so now based on my experience earlier when I was using this watch so I press it once the device will beep and also when I press it again to stop it will also beep once so and, and that could be a problem because you don't know if it's recording because it only beep once, right? Unless you take a look at the camera 
and you see that you know the the LED icon is blinking that's the only time you know it is recording so that would be something that you might want to watch out for you know I just want to give a shout out to my friend Alvin because he actually gave me this idea you know this is this will be like your day-to-day -day accessory because it can clip anywhere so what do you guys think should you get one well, honestly, if you're looking for something that's basic and also affordable, that does the job, you know, for everyday blogging, you know, to document uh, family or when you go travel, yeah, that would be something I would recommend. Like for me, I'm not doing too crazy about it since I mostly focus more on photos. Um, I'll be using this mainly for like behind the scenes and also like maybe blogs like this. Then, you know, I would say something it is for, uh, it is worth it. I actually got a good deal on this through Amazon which I'm gonna be posting links down below. Check out their links because sometimes they do have coupons that you can apply. And I actually got like $40 off of, of this one. All right, that's it for today. Thanks again, guys. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe for more reviews. I'll see you next time.